Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So I am going to do an infinity pour with colours that I haven't really used in any artwork um, much. So some of these uh, older paints that I brought, but I liked the colours, but I didn't use them because I didn't want to waste them. <laughs> so I've used this before. I've got Deep Sea from Eraldo Di Paolo. And with that, I am going to use Lagoon from Arado de Polo. So this one's an opaque and that one's a transparent. So that will be in one cup. The other side, pardon me, will be Harbour Night, which is a dark blue. And that one I will mix with one called Tranquility, which is an old global of mine, which I presume is an opaque. These ones don't actually say. So I presume that's going to be a transparent and an opaque. Then I have got metallic silver, black and white. So all of these are mixed. So, sorry. The four colours are 22 grams paint, 38 grams Floetrol and 15 grams water. The silver, the black and the white are 11 grams paint. 19 grams Floetrol and 7 grams water. And that is the black, white and silver I will mix into both cups. So really there's a half the amount of that again once I mix it into the other cups. And sorry, I've got a little bit of hay fever at the moment. So I've got a little slight sniffle. All right, so that is the measurements. I will get these paints out of the way so I can start. And I'll grab a tissue because my nose has just started running. Always happens when I go to do a video. I get a cough, a tickle in my throat, a runny nose, or I sneeze. Ah. So, I will do one cup first. So let's go to the greens. So just give everything a quick little stir again before you start putting it in. So that's the Lagoon, and this is the Deep Sea, and then we've got black, white, and silver. So sometimes when I do this, the black can actually become quite dominant. So I always use um, half the amount, and that's mixed over two cups. So really it shouldn't be as dominant as it is, but doesn't always become dominant but sometimes it does so first of all I'm going to put some transparent in then I'll mix some opaque and I'm doing this as a dirty pour which means I'm pouring it heavily into the middle where it kind of sinks in and goes right into the paint some silver and then we just keep adding these colours. By the time this is done, this cup should be quite full. So I thought it would look quite good if I went a really dark green and a really light green. And I haven't really used these Lagoon and Tranquility very much at all. Um, sometimes I buy colours and I can't get hold of them again. So I'm hesitant to use them because then I won't have that colour anymore. But I do have to just start. There's no point holding on to them until they're no good. So i got to just start using some of them up. Ah, oh, my nose is really giving me... Issues. I'm going to put a little bit more black next to that silver. So all I'm going to do is make sure I don't put black and the white next to each other. Even though they probably will mix once they're in the paint. Um, I don't really want them next to each other while I'm doing this bit. And 
as you can see the cap's getting a bit a little bit full so that will be the last bit of black I put in there hold that from a height and just scrape the last little bit in on the top So if you haven't done an infinity pour before, they are really fun. They're probably one of the funnest paintings to do. You just don't really know what you're going to get. and um, They're just interesting. A little bit of silver and then the last bit of the lagoon. So I thought this would be quite a nice contrasting um, light green and dark green together because this green is kind of a it's kind of a bluey green it's not really a, um, a very solid lime green or anything like that where did I put my tissue So it's spring here now and I'm a horticulturalist so I have flowers everywhere which means I get hay fever sometimes. Um, there's a lot of flowers out at the moment so my garden is quite full um, of plants so and spring's always my um, probably my main flowering season it gets a little bit hot here in the summer so we'll quite easily get into the 40s in summer um, quite frequently so a lot of my plants decide it's too hot they don't want to flower when it's excessively hot which i don't blame them um so we we seem to have quite a good flowering season in the winter as well especially with a lot of our natives. Uh, maybe some silver in between. So yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a pretty um, city. Um, as much as we get very hot, um, there's a lot of wildlife. Um, a lot of flowers we've got really unique biodiversity here when it comes to um, plants um, one of the most diverse places in the world which is really quite good for a quite a ex excessively hot climate um, plants are adapted to it very well and it's just interesting it's it's fun to see I, I watch TV shows and when they do like an an alien um planet or something and i'm like they're not alien flowers they're flowers from where i live just because they're, they're very unique but same with our animals our animals are quite unique here too we've got very strange looking animals but they're very cool we do have a um an issue but with a lot of we don't really have a lot of big predators here um, but since settlers have brought in um, cats dogs rats foxes and they've become a little bit wild in some areas they have decimated a lot of um, native animals which is quite sad as much as i love cats dogs and I think foxes look really cute um, just the damage they've done is a little bit a little bit saddening now if you want to see a really cool animal and you never heard of it before we've got an animal called a quokka and they um, are now only native to a small island off the 
off the coast of our city really, not too far. You can swim there if you're brave enough. Um, I'm not too brave enough to go swimming that far into the ocean when we're in a Australian ocean. You never know what's what's in the water. <laughs> But yeah, if you haven't seen a quokka before, Google it, because they are really, really cute. They're, I think they were deemed one of the most photogenic animals. Because they're just really cute. And they're quite people-friendly, especially the one, because they only live on an island, and it's a tourist attraction. They are quite used to people, and they like to come up and say hello, and get selfies, they love selfies. And we also have a beautiful um, coral reef. Little, little known that um, we have one of the best coral reefs in the world here along that coastline. And it's also the most southern coral reef in the world. So, it's not in the tropics as such, it's a bit lower down. I'm going to move that over slightly. So as you can see, I must have added a little bit more black, white and silver into the green because it is more full, that cup. Alrighty. Oh, sorry. I've had a hay fever tablet, but it's still... Irritating me, we get really strong winds here. It's like, um, if you're in America, compare it to California Santa Ana winds because we're on the I'm on the west coast, very similar to Californian climate, and it blows a lot of the dust and hay fever causing stuff around. So, alrighty, now on to the paint. So as you can see, there's some cool effects happening already. Um, doing an infinity, infinity pour is really interesting. And depending on how you do your circles will depend on how the painting comes out. What I'm trying to do lately is not flick them around too vigorously because a lot of paint kind of plonks out. I'm going to try and do it a little bit more slower, a little bit more steadier. And as the cup gets less, then I can um, go a little bit more faster with it. All right, we are recording, yes. That's good. Alrighty. So, here we go. Slightly tilt the cup. Cross over the patterns. Now there's less in there. Go a little bit more. Okay, I'm getting drip drops now, not swirls, so I'm stopping. So you see how I started getting all the drips? Um, I don't always like that. I like to keep the swirly lines. So I probably should have moved back and forth a little bit more. So these lines kind of went all over the place, but no matter. Feels like there's actually a lot of paint here. I could probably go a little bit less. And these don't use up a lot of paint, Infinity Pores. They tend to, um, a lot of it is Floetrol or water. Well, not a lot of water, but you can kind of use better quality paint sometimes because you can use a little bit less of them. So I'm going corner to corner. And I'm going to go up to this one and try and take it steady and then at the last minute just quickly tilt over the rest. Now this bottom one. Okay. So I'm getting a lot of green. 
So I'm bringing everything back into the middle. And I feel like I still have a lot of green. So I'm actually going to go and take a little bit more off this corner. Not a lot. Just a bit. These colours are beautiful together, actually. Really loving that. So what you do is you've got to put it down and look at it and think, do I want to take off another corner? And while I'm thinking about that, I am going to just make sure that my very corner corner bits have got paint on them. So often when you go over the edge, it goes over the edge but doesn't get the bottom part of the corner. Yeah, as you can see there. If you feel like you don't have the right colour finger, just get a little bit off what's fallen over. Okay, and just don't put your hands on top of the canvas. So I'm really liking this. I'm going to see if I can bring that purple up a little bit more higher. I mean the blue. The blue's kind of gone very slaty grey. No, I'm not going to be able to do too much without taking off what I like. But this is really, really good. It's kind of, um, it's, it looks very earthy in a way. Even though the green is quite bright, the way that the paint is kind of sitting there looks really organic, if that's the right word to use. It looks natural, doesn't look unnatural. So with Infinity Pores, they will change. So as it's sitting here, more cells or effects are going to continue to pop up over five to ten minutes. Um, probably in the first five minutes you'll get most of it. You don't always realise until you... If you got to where to take... Do an Infinity Pore, take a photo. As soon as you'd got it over the edges and then ten minutes later come back and take another photo, you'll be like... Where did they come from? So that's where I'm getting these like earthy bubbles or kind of, it's hard to explain. They're just really cool effects that come through it. So the black did not take over at all. If anything, the black is a little bit um, missing. It's kind of washed it away. The white is what seems to come up if with the effects. And there is some silver in there, but it's kind of mixed with the colours of the paint and made them just a bit shimmery instead of being um, a dominant silver. I can see some over here. If you were to use something like um, a Deca Art Extreme Sheen or Deca Art Metallics, you would probably get silver pop up through it. But be careful because as that happens, it will push the paint other directions. So it will change your, your image. But... I'm going to use my palette knife to point. So over through here, I can see a green streak running through like a green vein. Over here, you've got purple that runs. I'm going to say purple, but it's, it's a, it's a grey. It's a bluey grey. Through here, you've got a blue line, but there's um, green cells, green things popping up all through it. You've got this here. Over here, you've got green and blue mixing together and kind of lines and waves. There isn't so much of the Infinity Pour um, crossover that I get. When I did some of the original ones, I had a very distinctive colours underlapping over each other. Um, depending on what colours you use, they behave differently. So with this, I have opaque and a transparent in each colour. So that's what's giving me a different reaction is because I've got an opaque and a transparent. If I was to use two opaques or two transparents, they would behave differently. So keep that in mind if you're going for a certain effect. You've got to try it out. You really have to try these things a few times and work out how the paint is going to behave. Um, I probably should start recording in my head which which way it works so I can give you guys more information 
Also remember, these paints are relatively thin because they mix quite a lot with Floetrol and water in them. So for that reason, if your canvas is not 100% flat or even, you will lose some of your artwork. Um, take it from me, it's happened a few times. I've done an infinity pour. Um, it looked good. I'm like, okay, I can go out now. So I've gone out for the day and I've come home and it has stretched all down to one corner because there was a slight little tip. So what I do when I put my canvas on the table is I tap the opposite corners and make sure there's no rocking, like when you get a table that's slightly uneven and you can feel that rocking. Um, if you do, don't use that canvas for an infinity pour. Um, just don't do it. Don't use it for a flip cup either. Um, you can use those canvases for certain pours, but not flip cups or infinity pours. It will mess them up. Um, make it from experience. That's why people like, that's why I do videos is so I can learn things and I can teach you things from my own mistakes or, um, mistakes and from my successes. And I have learnt um, infinity pours and flip cups hate an une uneven canvas. I am just going to slightly torch to make sure that I have got my bubbles out. This is more to get rid of bubbles than to do anything else. If you were to use Extreme Sheen or Deca Art Metallics, you may get pearls by doing the heating up. But I'm, this is just Eraldo de Paulo Silver, so it was not going to give me any pearls or cells. I have tried it before and it doesn't seem to work. So. I don't think I'm going to get a lot more effects out of this or much changes that is really going to be um, noticeable or dominant. I love this. I feel this looks very, it looks very natural and earthy. I love these blues that have gone together. Um, I wasn't expecting that green to be so bright, but um, it's worked really well in my favour. So I'm liking this a lot. So... I'm going to pause it and bring you down for a close-up. And there we go. So as you can see, it, it, to me it feels quite natural, like a, looking at it from space, or not space, but from a hot air balloon looking down at the earth, seeing everything in natural form. Um, I love it. Let's go up here and look at this corner. Focus. See, I've got a green little like, lightning strike coming through here and I've got different effects coming up through it then as we go down you can see where the blues and the greens meet sometimes mixing a little bit um, other parts staying separate keep going down we've got this corner and then we can come across and where you've got the blue you've got these green cells or specks coming up through it and white Keep coming over this way and you've got these green lines and these blue lines and see how the blue is very grey, grey blue, very earthy kind of colour. And then we've got little streaks of blue going through here and even up through there we do as well, not as noticeable. There's a bit of black. We come up, we get some silver and some more black come up in here got like a nice blue line and blue vein in the green stay focused camera and then here's the center where there is silver and black underneath here and you can see it showing up through a little bit but not over the top but this is pretty cool so I love it I hope you guys like it Thanks for watching my video, share, 
subscribe if you haven't already, like, leave comments, and I will see you tomorrow for, um, it will be, I'm going to try and do a different type of painting again. Let's see how I go with that one. <laughs> Have a great evening and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.